Ano po ang ginagawa nila sa ganitong nangyaring masamang sistema na paliit na paliit it's po ang ating farmland? Sorry po, madam ha. Marami po mga probinsya na marami it's... na po mga subdivision na nagsilipa na. And where will the people live if you don't build subdivisions? Marami po mga lugar na pwede pong pagtayuan ng subdivision. And then papasok po ito mga negosyante at mag-offer ng pera para bilhin ang kanilang mga lupain. Of course, walang choice po yung mga farmers mm -hmm. kung hindi ibenta na lang kanilang lupa. And not everybody Act. agrees with you. Well, not everybody uh, ako, agrees with you. I don't well, agree. Alam niyo, sinasabi ko nga because, sa kanila, ako, because, I'm a daughter of a mayor. Uh, session suspended for one minute. Bubon na po tayo. Food security. Lumilit ng lumilit po ang ating farmland. Binibili po ng mga malalaking developer at ginagawa ang commercial at residential land. Ano po ang ginagawa ng DA tungkol dito? Alam nyo, I, we are, that's our business. Pag I want to tell you that we don't buy agricultural land in the provinces. Nobody will buy houses in agricultural land. We only buy in cities and capital towns because the, the buyer of houses, they want also uh, as, uh, uh, an opportunity that if they're, they're having financial problems, they can resell their houses. And you know, it's very hard to resell houses in, in not in cities or capital towns. I'm so from Isabela we, po. We limit ourselves in cities and capital I'm towns. I'm from Isabela po. At mm -hmm. marami po akong may bibigay sa inyong ebidensya, proof, na mga farmland na convert po sa subdivision. But in Kaya nga po cities, yan ang dahilan kung bakit ko gustong may pasa na po yung National Land hindi, Use that's, Act. That's in cities and capital towns. But I don't think in the... In the, well, in Isabela, uh, in, in, the, in Kawain, ano, Isabela there po, there will be like that. In Kawain, Isabela po, Kawain City, Isabela, may mga farmland po doon na nakonvert e, Kawayan na po. Kawain is a city. Regardless, oh, ang pinag-usapan po natin, yung mga if, farmland uh, po na nakonvert na po sa isang subdivision o commercial. But they allow that in cities and capital they towns. They po, allow conversion po, in cities and capital towns because if they buy your land, they buy it expensive and they you can reinvest the money and you will make more money than planting on those lands. Okay. I remember we have, uh, when I was young, we have a, a, a chicken, a big chicken farm in Muntinlupa. But Muntinlupa became a six. So we finally develop our chicken farm because it it is eight, eight hectares. We will make more money than in uh, far in farming. So it's it's an investment decision for these people. If somebody will buy your land at a bigger amount, maybe uh, you can sell it and buy another land in, that is cheaper somewhere else and build your farm there. Oh, I think it's the thinking of this. You have to to understand uh, agriculture as a business also. Oh, I'm not a businessman, but I can understand agriculture, Puma. To sell your land at a higher price and be able to buy a bigger piece of land with that same money in a uh, less prime places, then you will do it. Kaya nga po, ito pong tanong ko po sa ating mga taga-DA. Ano po ang ginagawa nila sa ganitong nangyaring masamang sistema na paliit na paliit po ang ating farmland? Sorry po, madam, ha? Na hindi lang po sa Kawayan, sa Isabela, po sa marami po mga probinsya, na marami na po mga subdivision na nagsilipa na... And where will the people live if you don't build subdivisions? Marami po mga lugar na pwede pong pagtayuan ng subdivision. Huwag lang po i-take over yung mga farms. Kasi nga po, kuminsan yung mga farmers, dahil sila po yung chaos, they're being taken advantage of. No. Lalo na po meron tinatawag na rice tarification. So mura po yung mga bigas na dumarating dito, they cannot compete. And then papasok po ito mga negosyante at mag-offer ng pera para bilhin ang kanilang mga lupain. Of course, walang choice po yung mga farmers kung hindi ibenta na lang kanilang lupa sapagkat meron na po tinatawag na rice tarification. I wrote the rice tarification ah, law. Yun? You know, uh, we wrote that rice tarification law because in 20 in 2018, uh, the price of rice rose to almost 50 to 60 pesos yeah. per kilo. And that is the only time President Duterte became unpopular because rice is a, a political crop. 
when nagmamahal ang rice, nagiging unpopular ang president. And uh, the World Bank, we signed that WTO agreement in 1995, and they gave us 25 years to be competitive, but we failed to be competitive after 25 years. And if we don't open the lib or liberalize the importation of rice, they will bring down our credit rating. And we have plenty of loans abroad, and we have to pay higher interest for those loans, so it will be a loss to the Philippine government. So what I did when they asked me to, to write the rice tarification law, I gave all the money from the collection of rice tariff to the small farmers, 10 billion for the Rice Competitiveness Enhancement RCE. Fund, 5 billion for mechanization, 3 billion for seeds, 1 billion for loans, 1 billion for training. And anything above 10 billion that was collected, it was given to the rice farmers owning 2 hectares and below, 5,000 each, 1.6 million farmers. So that is 8 billion. So a total of 18 billion, which is the collection of the rice tarification law na rice tariff. Alam ko po yan. I don't feel any guilt to the small farmers. All the money that came from the rice tarification law were given to the small farmers owning two hectares and below. So how do we identify those small farmers? Paano they have po a list. Do you have po a list? They so have paano a po list. ninyo pinipili ng DA? No, they have paano, a list. I know po. Paano po pinipili uh, kung sino po ang maging recipient nitong pera na galing po sa rice tarification. How uh, are they, they being identified? They have a list of farmers owning two hectares and below. So, oh, meron po... Magpapalista ka sa kanila. They have a... Uh, RSBSA. RSBSA. Okay. Uh -oh. So, I have no guilt to any rice farmers. I, I'm not All saying... the money that came from the rice tarification I'm not saying were given po guilty. back to the rice farmers. I wrote that law. I know. Ako because po yan... I studied the difference between us and the rice farmers of Vietnam. The rice farmers of Vietnam, they produce their palay at six pesos per kilo. We in the Philippines, we produce our palay at 12 pesos per kilo. The six pesos difference, I look at it, and 350 is labor. That means we're not mechanized. And 250 is the productivity of the seed. So there's something wrong with our seed. So when I wrote that Rice Competitiveness Enhancement Fund, I gave 5 billion to mechanization and 3 billion to seed distribution and also to train them to do the same seeds with their own farm. I, I am teaching them to learn how to do inbred seedlings. Uh, okay. Uh, you finished, Paul? Yes, yes. Okay. Let's go back po doon sa food security. Alam ko po na meron pong tinatawag na Rice Comprehensive Enhancement Fund. Rice Competitive Competitive Enhancement okay. Fund. Enhancement Fund. Nasabi niyo po sa akin, so dapat may 2 hectares yung farmer para sila po ay mag-qualify dyan. Okay na po tayo dyan. However, hindi pa rin po talaga tunay na nasasagot yung pong katanungan ko po na ano pong ginagawa ng DA na yung pong mga farmland ay nakoconvert na po sa mag, nag, nagiging residential area na po at commercial area? We need the residential area and the commercial area to, com to improve the quality of lives of our people. Ang, ang alam nyo, it's not the amount of farmlands. It's the efficiency of using these farmlands. Alam nyo, pag maganda ang seeds mo at mechanized ka, even with smaller area of farmlands, you can do better Kaya and po, earn mami. more. Kaya nga, we're teaching the farmers to do mechanization and to, do, and to plant better seedlings and to teach them that they have to operate their farm as a small business so they will make more money. You know, okay. <laughs> hindi, naman, <laughs> hindi naman ito komo malitan lupa mo. Kaya we're organizing them into cooperatives para may economies of scale sila. Kasi kung two, two, two hectares kayo, 
uh, mag-organize kayo, tatlumpung farmer, then you have 60 hectares. And okay. then you mechanize, hindi ka matatapos sa palay. Uh, bibigyan ka ng filmek ng uh, uh, ano tawag dito, dryer and milling. So ang production mo, hindi na palay na baba, babarating ka ng middleman, kundi mapoproduce mo na hanggang rice. Tapos because you are a cooperative, you have economies of scale, you can go to the supermarket directly and uh, sell your rice to them, you will make more money. Okay. Oo. So it's it's not the amount of land, it's the model. We have to change the model of our agriculture because I agree. there is something wrong yes. with our model of okay. agriculture. Now, uh, sinasabi niyo po kanina na the farmers has to use mechanized uh, technology. Kaya nga po, it is not how small the farm is at kailangan po magkaroon ng improvement sa isang lugar kaya kailangan po magkaroon ng mga subdivision. So, kung yan po yung inyong premise, bakit hindi lang po natin tulungan itong mga malilit na farmers, bigyan na lang po sila ng puhunan para magkaroon po sila ng uh, maging mechanized na po yung kanilang farming Binibigyan style. Binibigyan po. Oo, well, then instead na bibilin po, po yung kanilang mga lupa, pabayaan na lang po natin sila na isaka yung kanilang lupain at Meron tutulungan po. na lang po sila na, Meron po. na para Meron hindi po. na po ma-convert, hindi na po ma-convert yung kanila po ang mga farm into subdivision, into commercial uh, area and what have you. And this is the reason kung bakit po talaga kailangan ma-push na po natin itong National Land Use Act. At hindi ko po alam kung bakit hanggang ngayon apat na presidente na po ang dumaan at hindi pa rin po itong mapasa-pasa. Hindi ko po alam kung bakit. Your guess alam is nyo, as good as mine. Yung Land Use Act, uh, lahat po ng local government may land use plan na sila. Nagpagawa na sila ng land use plan. The power of determining the implementation of the land use is with the local government. Why will you remove, you will remove it from the local government and transfer it to the national government? Do you think that is better? It is better for the dapat sa national government ang humawak po nitong batas na national Not land use Not everybody act. agrees with you. Well, not everybody agrees ako, with I you don't well. agree. Alam nyo, sinasabi ko nga because, sa kanila, ako, because, I'm a daughter of a mayor. Uh, session suspended for one minute. Uh. Yes. Uh, majority Leader? Yes, Mr. President, uh, to continue uh, the interpolation and the budget of uh, the Department of Agriculture and uh, its attached agencies, um, may I move that we recognize again the uh, distinguished gentleman from uh, Dabao, uh, Isabella, Isabella, and the Republic of the Philippines, Senator uh, Rafi Tulfo, and the distinguished sponsor of the budget, Senator Cynthia Villar. And before I recognize them, we'd just like to put on record the time. It is 2. <laughs> 28 a.m. record-breaking po ito for this Congress. Pinapakita natin yung ating kasipagan bilang mga uh, kawani ng gobyerno. Uh, please proceed, uh, gentlemen and uh, sponsor. Nahiya na po ako dahil o nga pala, <laughs> 2 na at napupuit na po tayong lahat. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna say? Except that I apologize to all of you guys. Uh, Mr. President, uh, dahil uh, nadrag po itong uh, uh, aking interpolation and I'll make it short and sweet na. Isang sagot na lamang po kay Madam Chair, Mr. President, <laughs> and then after that, isang sagot ko, and then finish. <laughs> okay. Okay ba sa inyo, Mr. President? Is that okay, Mr. Absolutely. President? Absolutely. Absolutely, Your Honor. No need to apologize. In uh, the halls of the Senate, we are free to give our opinions and uh, discuss and debate. Okay. My request lang kanina was just to address the chairperson, uh, the okay. presiding officer, yes, so that there will be no direct debates or else uh, okay. it will always be heated. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, yes, please continue, sir. Mr. President, isa lang po tanong ko kay Madam Chair. Madam Chair, kayo ba'y pagod na? <laughs> You know, naman, I'm very uh, 
tolerant when it comes to you. You know that. Okay. So your, it, wow. <laughs> your Thank chief you, of Chief. staff, your son-in-law, is very nice to me. Oh. Uh, I always remember him. Because I taught him to be nice to you, especially. <laughs> I, I gave him instructions to be very, very nice to you. Anyway, since yung inyo pong sagot medyo kayo po'y pagod na, therefore, I will end my interpolation. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. President, maraming salamat. Magandang gabi po. Thank you very much, but I will hold a special session, personal session with you and explain everything. Salamat po. Pero okay lang po ba? Last na po, Mr. President. Yes, yes. Okay lang po ba na ako po'y gagawa ng privilege speech tungkol sa National Land Use Act? Yes, that's okay with me. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much. That's all. Thank you.